So I'm going to show you how to download and set up LS Prepost, which is a very commonly used preprocessor for FE analysis on LS Dyna. Um, so what we'll have to do is just type in LS Prepost download. Click this first link here, and then you're going to navigate the sidebar to LS Prepost download. I usually use 4.3, and there's a bunch of new versions. Uh, download whatever kind you have. I have Windows. And then you're just going to download it, hit run or save, whatever you want. And then just double click it when it's done, do the whole setup process. You know what to do. So when you open up Prepost, it's going to look like this. Uh, there may be a little help bar whenever you open it up and you can just hide everything. First thing you did, or you should do, and I explained this last video, make sure you have um, text and icons on, on the right. And um, same thing with the bottom. It's just a lot easier to navigate that way. Also, not everybody needs to do this, but I changed the background and everything to be a uh, different color. Um, let me import something to give you an example. So I'm bringing this cone. What I do is make the background white. So I go to settings, uh, configuration settings, color, make the background color white. And then you're going to want to make sure you change the text color to black, timestamp color to black, label color to black. You don't have to do this either. I mean, it's whatever you want. And then hit OK. And then this is still white, so you're going to need to go there as well to geometry. I think it's color. No, it's general. Yeah, feature tree color, which is this. You want to make that black as well. So. Now everything should be visible. It's pretty clean. I don't know. You don't have to do it. You can leave it like it was, but it doesn't matter to you. So um, this is how Prepost is laid out. You've got um, your standard toolbar at the top, similar similar to HyperMesh, where a lot of the same things you can find here. Um, I really don't use it too much aside from like the view and that type of stuff. You can go to File, Open. Um, and go to keyword file and actually double click to open a keyword file that way instead of just dragging it in because you can also just straight drag the files in um, like this and it opens it. Uh, you can also import multiple so if you have multiple um, keywords you can go to import lsdyna.k file and import another uh, file and it's just going to show up next to it. And what it's going to say is do you want to overwrite the nodes or do you want to offset the ID so that they don't overwrite whatever's here? You know that, that may be another another video, but you can you can import as well and then um, You can save as uh, <laughs> There's just a lot to go over. I'll go over that another day um, So looking at the bottom toolbar, you've got just different visualization options. This is kind of like wireframe um, this is actually wireframe shaded element view elements not going to have any light on it It's just gonna be flat Edge features. I usually leave it at shaded And then mesh you can turn the mesh on and off. You can also this weird like I don't know what this is it looks like Tron <laughs> But whatever um, These are also unreferenced nodes. So if you ever see like little black dots in your models, you can toggle those on and off um, pick center is how you re, uh, redo the, or change the center of rotation for your, um, mouse. Um, to rotate, you hold control and then you can left click and drag. You can also hold shift and left click to keep the mesh active. So if you have big models, you can use control and it's going to put it in the wireframe. So it's just smoother to rotate, but shift, it's going to rotate with the mesh. Um, zoom in and out, you can hold shift or control to just zoom in and out with the mouse. You can also hold the right uh, click button, do the same thing. Uh, if you hold control or shift as well, you can hit the middle scroll button and you can pan. Just basic things. Uh, there's also auto center, so you, know, you can just go really far away and boom, back. Uh, these are prescribed um, like presets for views. So top is going to be relative to the z-axis so technically this would be top and then um, you can just flip through these there's also isometric views you can use 
if you find a view you want, so say you're here and you want to rotate it incrementally. So if we want to rotate along the X axis, which we're at um, 20 degrees, what you can do is you can right click here and you can type in whatever amount you want. And then you can right click this to determine what axis you're going to rotate it on. So we can just say the X is fine. Um, whenever you hit it, you can hit left click and it's going to rotate it whatever this amount is. You can also left click this to change it positive or negative. Just a useful tip. Um, let's see. So the biggest part with repost is over here on the, um, the right side. This is like your main toolbar. You've got um, your geometry stuff here, which you won't have to worry about too much, but you may. I have never touched these. I honestly don't know what they are. If we need to get into it, we can. But these are your four main toolbars that change the sub toolbar here. You've got mesh, um, which prepost is free and you can, like it's free for anybody and you can mesh stuff. It's just, it's not super great. And there's some very archaic looking tools like this 2D mesh. I mean, I don't know what year this is from, um, but you, it's, it's pretty easy to mesh shapes. So you can do like, uh, I think it's solid mesher. Um, I don't use it very often, but I've done auto mesh. That's what it is. Um, if, or maybe it's block. I don't know. I don't, I don't use this very much, but if anyone wants me to do a tutorial on meshing and pre-post, I can try. It's mostly probably gonna be like boxes and planes. So you got mesh. Um, model is really important. This is where all the details of your model are going to be. So within model, you can go to select part and that's going to show the different parts of the model and you can directly click onto them um, one at a time. Or you can hit control and select them both. This bar right here is going to let you select all the different types of parts. So you have shells, which are um, just two dimensional structures. And then you can have solids, which are solid structures. And you can kind of click all of the solids, all of the shells on at once, which is a nice way to kind of navigate and, you know, order everything. You can also sort these by input order, which is the order that they're organized in the text file itself, or you can go to number order. So one important aspect to realize with um, prepost is everything in here is just straight from a keyword file. Um, I don't know if I have a decent text editor right now. I'll get into that another video, but whatever's in here is just read straight off of text. Like it's like just coding basically. Um, so if you click on any of these, you can hit info and find out any info about it. We haven't done anything with these. Like there's no names or whatever. Um, keyword is where all the, all of like the guts of the, uh, model are. So you've got, um, you can hit all and actually look at all of the different types of things you can do with finite element analysis. It's, uh, it's dense. I mean, um, <laughs> I can't even go over all this right now, but for example, um, let's say we wanted to name one of our parts, something else. So you see these were auto created. Um, and so part one is this shell. Let's, let's make part two something. Um, so we have this cone, we go into keyword, we're going to go into part. I know it's part two, so let's rename it to cone solid. And then we can leave part, I, this is part ID, we can leave this as two. Section ID is how um, the elements of the part are going to react with each other. So if you want to make a section, you click this button, you can hit new, new keyword, and then this little box is going to pop up. Um, then it's going to automatically click whatever type of section it needs to be. So this is a solid part. So it's going to give you section solid You can give it a section ID. So let's just give it two because that's, uh, the ID that it is for the part EL form is the element formulation for these. Um, this is the issue with prepost. There's just so much in here and it's, it would take me two hours to go through a lot of this stuff. I may stop after, um, a little bit and split this up. I don't know, but uh, EL form is how the elements are going to react. So how these nodes of the elements are going to react under stress. So um, you have all these different equations and types of ways that it's going to react. 
uh, constant stress solid element is the default, which is basically going to say it's a constant stress throughout the element as it's compressed. There's also fully integrated, which is just a more detailed way um, that the nodes are reacting. Uh, I, I don't want to get into it too much right now, but it a lot of these have differences in like how accurate a model is going to be when compared to real life. And it's also going to affect how long models take to run. So we'll leave it at one because that's uh, default. Um, you really don't have to worry about A too much. And once you change it, you can also say, give it a title. So like cone solid. So just match it up and then hit accept. So now you see in cone solid, we have your part ID. Now we have your section ID. And now it needs material. Um, so if you hit new keyword and I think you have to click one through here. So let's just give it an elastic. Um, you can hit new ID. Let's make it two. Oh gosh. Uh, these are all aspects of uh, the material. So let's just density. Oh God. <laughs> this is too detailed right now, but um, you can give it properties and there's a ton of different materials you can choose. Prepos is also unit, unit list, which means the units are defined however you want them to be. So there's almost unit systems that you can pick. Um, and I'm not going to get into that right now. But whenever you, you can give it a material and you hit accept. So now you've got your part, your section, and your material. You also have um, these different options like hourglass IDs. Don't worry about it. Hit accept. So now we've updated this part to actually be more than just an automatically created part. So you can hit info and now it says exactly what's in it. So you, your section solid is this and your material is elastic um, with a density of one. What is it? I don't know. I haven't defined any, or any uh, uh, unit system yet, but I'm just going to keep going. So keyword has everything about the model. Uh, your elements are all in here. And you can like uh, just scroll through and look at them all. Um, so your elements are made up of different nodes of the model, which are here. And it also tells you what part each element is prescribed to. So all of the shells in this case are going to be part one, whereas all of the solids are going to be in part two, because that's just, we only have two parts. One's a solid, one's a shell. And in solids, you're going to have eight nodes because it's a uh, hexahedral element. And in the shell, you're only going to have four per each one because it's a, sh it's a, a quad. So um, let's see what else. But yeah, if you want to mess with it, you can just scroll through all this. And you can also look at the manual for LS Dyna, which um, you can find on their website as well. And you can read all about this stuff if you want to really exciting read so going down this create entity and this is like how you create different sets and different uh you can like it, it's like a visual creation tool so you can go to like set set node go to like create um and you can use this little selecting box to select nodes different ways so area you can click and drag and it's going to select all of the nodes of this part you can hit apply now you have a node set that is one that you can use to prescribe a motion to or whatever you want. Um, let's see, you've got uh, part data. I never use this. So don't worry about it. Display is how you display different things that you've created. Like I just created that node set, right? So you can click that on and you can also click it off. And it's just a nice way to see what is going to be happening with your model whenever you run it. Um, Renumber is a way that you can renumber the uh, things in your model. So your elements, your uh, nodes, whatever. Section is a way, I never use section, but I know it's useful. It's a way you can actually like, uh, I think this is how you can like drag through almost like a CT scan and see different cross sections of the model. Never use this, never use this. Groups, I think you can give, um, parts, different groups and subsystems, which is helpful. I think you can create custom views. Um, part color is how you can give the part different colors. You can just click it, click it. You can also do like transparency and, you know, toggle that more and off, whatever. Um, 
keep going. Let's see. Appearance um, is just uh, kind of like this, except you have more options where you can give, you can actually like view the thickness of your shells. Um, let's see. This is a little more disorganized of a video, and I apologize, but um, I'm just going to have to get my bearings on the best way to explain this. Um, but so that's kind of the basic. Oh, wait, I haven't even gotten into this. Hold on. Element tool is where you can identify nodes, um, elements, uh, like the IDs, because every element in node has its own ID. Um, you can also identify like the parts. This is part two. You can clear all this off. You can find, which is very similar, where you can type in an ID and find. I don't know if node one is a thing. Blank is where you can uh, just like hide elements. Okay, like that, and you can unblank all. You can also like blank and then reverse, which is helpful. Move, copy, uh, you can move different uh, elements to a different part. So say you have a new part, let's just make it three, name it uh, not cone. That's not you spell cone. Hit apply. Now these elements have been moved to part three. See? Um, offset transform is like how you actually move elements throughout space, you can uh, uh, toggle whatever direction you want. So we want to move it in the Y, 10, you can move it around, you can reject it, you get it done. Um, normal, you can look at all of the normals of the model, which I think, I mean, there, there won't be normals on this because it's solid. Um, element edit, you can delete different elements um, you can also modify them. Um, measure will let you actually like measure the difference between like how wide an element is. This um, is useful sometimes. Let's see. Post is what you'll use. You know what? Maybe I should just break each one of these up into its own video. But post, regardless. <laughs> after you've run your model, you can use this to analyze the simulation itself. So I think that's it for this video. Um, sorry, I was a little jumbled up, but thanks.